As Christians, uh, I think we, we're really good at believing in the presence of God, but I think we actually struggle to believe in the power of God. We believe in his presence. He's here. Even right now, here among us, Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity, he's here. But I think sometimes in the Christian life, living out the Christian life, we struggle to actually believe in the power of God. And not just that God is powerful, but the fact that every baptized Christian is a temple of the Holy Spirit that right now, God himself, the powerful God, lives inside of you. And that this power in the name of Jesus can actually be released into the world, circumstances, and places for healing, deliverance, breakthrough, for God's glory to be revealed in accompanying signs. We believe, I think, a lot of times in the presence of God, but I think we do struggle to believe that the power of God can actually move in and through us in the Christian life. And you see, my brothers and sisters, that is exactly what God wants and what God desires. We were never supposed to be on the sidelines when it comes to the Christian life. We're actually to be participators in the Christian life, to share in the very glory and the life of Jesus Christ himself. You see, today with the ascension, Jesus Christ, who suffered, died, and rose for the forgiveness of our sins to begin to open up heaven once again for us to have relationship with God. He ascends rightfully now to take place at his throne in preparation for what's going to come next week, in preparation that he will send the Spirit to make us just like Jesus. It's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit begins to truly transform you into a new creation to be a son and daughter of God the Father after Jesus, within Jesus, to begin to move and operate and act like Jesus did. It's not a different Holy Spirit. It's the same Holy Spirit. And it's really challenging for us, my brothers and sisters, because... We hear, even in the first reading, the Lord Jesus tells his apostles, listen, I'm going to be baptizing you with the Holy Spirit, and power is going to come upon you, and you're going to be my witnesses to all nations. In the gospel, the Great Commission, you're to go out to make disciples. And not just make disciples, it says, these signs will accompany those who believe. Those who believe in my name, in the name of Jesus. These signs and wonders, people will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. They will get well. Moving in the power of God should be a normal reality to us as Christians because we literally have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. Like right now, I just want you to take a moment and think about this. You have the God of all the universe inside of you. Can you imagine what would happen if we began to actually let him out? Could we begin to actually imagine what it would be like if we began to live the way in which Jesus has desired us to be able to live, to live without fear, in this world. A lot of times, I've had conversations with people and stuff, and I've talked about, why don't you pray with that person? They're sick, or they're hurting. Have you asked in the name of Jesus to heal that? Or there's areas of breakthrough. Have you asked the Lord Jesus to pray to break that area? To begin to move and operate in new ways? Have you asked Jesus in his name? And sometimes the response is, well, usually it's no. And then, and then it's like, well, what if nothing happens? Man, that is, so, that is so not a Christian attitude. 
Honestly, like, that's not a Christian. Like, what if nothing happens? What if something does? Like, what if you said, in the name of Jesus, ankle be healed, and all of a sudden it was healed? What if you said, in the name of Jesus, headache be gone, and it happened? What if you pray for a particular breakthrough? Whatever it may be, what if, what if you need a parking spot, and you're in a really congested area, and you're like, Jesus, can you give me a parking spot in your name? Thank you. You think it's funny, but I do this stuff all the time. He's great at parking spots all the time. I remember one time, I was on a plane, I was going to Seattle, and I was doing a mission there, and it was a long flight, Things weren't going right, and I was a little, like, you know, frustrated, a little salty, tired. I wanted to get off the plane, and we land, get the jetway, and it's like, oh, hey, by the way, sorry, the jetway's broken. We don't know how long you're going to be on the plane. And I was like, oh, no. I was not having it. And the priest calls me, and he's like, hey, are you here? I'm like, yeah, I landed. I'm going to be on the jetway. I don't know how long. Uh, it's broken. And the priest, so great, he was like, uh, did you ask Jesus to fix it? I was like, no. And he's like, maybe you should do that. So I was a little salty with the Lord in a fun way. And I was like, Jesus, fix the jetway now. Thank you. And one second later, okay, the jetway is now fixed. You can begin deboarding the plane. Just like that. He lost it. He saw the phone. I lost it. I laughed. You know? He's still the Lord of the jetway, too. You know, he's the Lord. I remember my first time, I remember when I, I was super challenged, even by this gospel, about like laying my hands on somebody and praying for healing. And I was like super scared because I had this mentality of like, well, what if nothing happens, right? Until I was challenged, like, well, what if something does, right? And I would pray for healing before and nothing really, like, the person always felt love, which is amazing and beautiful, but I didn't see the healing yet. And I remember one time I was at, uh, I was blessing a house, doing a house blessing, and I saw this lady, she was walking. And she, like, really struggled to actually pick up her feet. You could tell she was in pain. And I felt the Lord, like, you should pray for healing for her. And I was like, no. And the Lord's like, you should do it. I was like, no. And so I said, you know what, Lord, if you want me to pray for healing, ask her. Or tell her to ask me to pray for her. So sure enough... Out of the blue, hey, can you pray for my feet and my knees for healing? Yes, I can. Absolutely. And I just remember, it was super simple. Put my hands over her feet. In the name of Jesus, I just call for the fire of your love to begin to heal every area in this woman's feet to begin walking again. In your name, Jesus, thank you. And I remember, I was like, just get up and walk. And she begins getting up, and all of a sudden, as she takes a step, one step, Feet pick up. Another, another step. And completely to the point that she could walk without pain, without any form of difficulty. And, and it's really funny is this. In my heart, I'm like, keeping, I'm like keeping it cool on the outside. I'm like, oh yeah, this is what Jesus does, you know. And on the inside, I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh, this is real. Jesus literally healed this lady. Like I, I had this like conversion in my heart in this moment of realizing that like I literally just asked in the name of Jesus really simply and his power was released and this woman is experiencing the fullness of healing right now in front of me and I'm freaking out and I began to realize in my life of I was living so much of this what if nothing happens I don't want to take the chance of you know looking foolish or whatever it may be instead of being like what if something does happen and I have countless stories of watching the Lord move and operate. But here's the thing, my brothers and sisters. you got to step out. Like, I even love it in the gospel. You know, it says they will pick up serpents with their hands. you got to do something. you got to pick it up. Right? They're going to drink deadly things. Drink. They'll lay hands. Right? There's this move, my brothers and sisters, in the Christian life. The Holy Spirit's inside of us. And we have this moment to begin to release him upon people, upon circumstances, situations, in the name of Jesus. That power goes forth from us. Jesus invites us in the Christian life to live and to move as he lived and to move by the power of the same Spirit 
upon him, in him, that raised him from the dead in the same spirit that's going to be poured out in greater measure next week at Pentecost. That's the whole point. To go out, to proclaim to all nations that other people can experience that God is real. Trust me, when you see a miracle happen right before you, you cannot deny that God exists and God is real. And it builds up the body, it builds up the faith, not just for the person that's healed or whatever it may be, but you are an instrument. Trust me, when you experience God's power move through you, it is one of the most beautiful and humbling things you'll ever experience. Any form of suffering I've ever encountered in my life is worth the moment for someone knowing Jesus, experiencing healing, experiencing deliverance, is just stepping out. We need Jesus. People need Jesus. And they just sent the Holy Spirit for the sake of us being able to be sons and daughters of God the Father. But he sent the Holy Spirit upon us for the sake of us going out and other people knowing Jesus to move and to operate as Jesus did. My brothers and sisters, I want to challenge you. Like, what if you began living? What if we began living in this mentality of what if Jesus does something? What if something happens? Not what if something doesn't. No, what if something happens? Next week is Pentecost. And a great way to prepare for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit is to begin trying to move in the Holy Spirit right now. To begin saying, you know what, Lord, I want more of your spirit. I, want to, I don't want to live in fear. I don't want to live in focusing on myself, but I want to actually live in allowing to proclaim your gospel, to allow your spirit to move in and through me. And how am I going to prepare, Lord? I'm going to go out and pray for someone. I'm going to go for it. I may be scared, Lord, but I'm going to say in your name, this be healed. In your name, this be broken. Whatever it may be. I want to challenge you. What if this week, like, you just started asking in the name of Jesus for all different things in the midst of your life, whatever it may be. Whether it's physical healing, emotional healing. You need a parking space. The jetway's broken. Like all these things, what if you just started thinking and began to move and praying on a daily basis and asking in the name of Jesus for him to move and to operate and to act in really beautiful ways? And I promise you, you're going to see him move in something. And when he does, thank him. We need to not just believe in his presence, we have to begin to believe in his power. But to believe in his power in greater measure, we have to be willing to move in it. We have to be willing to step out, to be uncomfortable. I mean, they call the Holy Spirit the comforter for a reason. He only comforts those who are uncomfortable. If you want to grow in your relationship with the Holy Spirit, then you have to be uncomfortable. You have to step out in situations where you need the Holy Spirit to actually comfort you. And trust me, it is uncomfortable to pray for someone for healing, but we need to do it. And the moment you begin to go for it, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, give you the words, and you will see him move and operate. It's how it works. And you know what? If you pray and nothing happens, who cares? Do it again. Keep going. Keep praying, because it's going to happen. The Lord will move and he'll operate. We're not on the sidelines. We're meant to be literally in the game, to participate in the Christian life and to move and operate as Jesus did. And in his name, by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us with the gift of our baptism, we can release him upon people, places, situations, and to begin the trust that he will move and operate as he desires. But I encourage you, I challenge you, honestly, I really challenge you. What if you began living the Christian life in the name of Jesus, praying and asking and moving in his spirit with this attitude of not if, what if something doesn't happen, but what if something does happen? Amen.